Hello everyone, this is Teacher Carl and I teach online and today I'm going to share to you 8 tips on how to manage your classes in a digital classroom. As we all know, in face-to-face -face classroom setup, classroom management has always been a challenge to many teachers, including myself. So, what more in a virtual classroom, which all of us are not trained to do and now being forced to learn? The things that I'm going to tell you are clearly based on my own research and those that other teachers have used, and of course, the practices that I have tried and worked in my own classes, and hopefully in your classes too. So, let's get started. These are the 8 tips for a successful classroom management. Tip number 1. Test the technology beforehand. Before meeting your class, please be sure that you have all your online teaching essentials ready. Of course, number 1 is internet connection. Choose the best internet provider in your area that is within your budget and most importantly, can provide stable and reliable internet connection. 2. A good headset. I recommend you find a headset with a mic that has noise cancelling feature. For the most obvious reason, it can minimize unavoidable background noise so the students will be able to hear you when you conduct the lesson. Built-in speakers and mics of most laptops and tablets are usually of poor quality and tend to pick up a lot of noise which could distract the class. 3. A laptop or tablet. Either of these two gadgets can work for your class. Although old models can perform fine, the recent models can provide you a much better experience. But remember, the success of your lesson does not only rely on the gadgets you are using. It is how you use them creatively and effectively. Tip number 2. Learn the apps. I know it's tempting to try out every new app that comes along, but the most effective online teachers don't get distracted by the shiniest app available. Some of the most commonly used conferencing apps are Skype, Zoom, Google Meet, and Cisco WebEx, among others. The truth is, we don't need to know all the features of the conferencing app you chose. You just need to practice and gain confidence in using a few basic and useful tools and you are good to go. But please don't stop there. Continue to explore the app little by little. Remember that students enjoy learning when we utilize a new approach or approaches to give them different experience from time to time. But you'll need an LMS too, which stands for learning management system for assigning work and providing feedback. Three of the most popular LMS now are Class Dojo, Google Classroom, and Seesaw. All of them offer similar features, but I suggest you do your own research and try them for free to see for yourself which one suits your needs. But my personal favorite is Class Dojo. It is so user-friendly and it really lives up to its tagline, bring every family into your classroom. Therefore, if you want to get everybody involved in your students' learning, Class Dojo is the perfect app to use. And before I forget, please, please, please conduct a mock class with your colleagues or friends before trying it with your real students. Tip number three. Involve your students in establishing norms or classroom rules. In the beginning of the school year, it is very essential that we implement rules in the classroom. Certainly, you'll want to set online classroom norms that make you feel comfortable while also creating the best environment for learning. And getting students' involvement in establishing norms can save you from the stress of classroom mismanagement in the coming days. If students have a say in creating the rules, they will be more likely to follow them. You can ask your students the following questions as guide in setting the rules with them.
These questions can make them think and will surely compel them to follow strictly because they contributed in establishing the rules with you. Tip number four. Do not give a lecture. Oh no! In a traditional classroom, engagement is a goal. We would like to encourage our students from beginning till end. But there should be a balance between engagement and order in the remote classroom. One thing that we have to consider when preparing our lesson is the learner's attention span. The younger they are, the shorter the attention span. Note that if they stop showing up, we may never get them back. And you get no one to blame but yourself. So to avoid it, make your lessons a mix of short but different fun learning activities and as much as possible, do not repeat the same activity over and over again. Why not do some activities or assessment in the form of games instead of that boring paper and pencil tests? Children will always participate in games no matter how tired or sleepy they are. Once you have finalized your plan, create an outline of your lesson where the allotted time for each activity is indicated. Place the outline near your working table. In doing this, you will be guided and can stay on track and will be able to achieve the objectives of your lessons. Tip number five. Acknowledge good behavior. Students also tend to misbehave in an online class, and because we are in a remote classroom, we don't have as much power as in regular classroom. So, instead of you focusing your energy on that student alone, divert your attention to the rest of your good students. Praise them generously in front of everybody. Don't praise them as a class. Students appreciate it more when they hear you mention their names. If that student constantly shows the same bad behavior, parents' involvement is necessary. Tip number six. Use a reward system. Some students might tune in just to tune out in the middle of the lesson. We know that it's inappropriate and disrespectful. For this scenario, Using a reward system is a great tool. Incentivize those students who stay for the entire session with some type of reward or points. You can use either a print or digital sticker board for the whole class or an individualized reward sheet. I tell you, this one is a game changer. If your students show lack of focus, you may also want to consider using the reward chart. To download ready-made and editable reward charts, go and register to www.twinkle.com. Membership is free, but access to all resources is limited. Subscribe as a teacher and get full access to their plethora of amazing materials. Minimum monthly pay is so worth it. But just a disclaimer, this is not a paid promotion. How I wish. Tip number seven, seek help. If none of these tips work for you, I guess you as a teacher need some help as well. As much as we want to be the super teachers for our students by doing all these preparations on our own, unfortunately, at the end of the day, we are still human and we get tired, exhausted, and pressured. Remember that it's never wrong to seek help from other people. As a matter of fact, it is advisable. Here are some people who can help you. Experienced colleagues, guidance counselors, school psychologists, and of course, our partner for learning, the parents. Finally, tip number eight. Show your personality. Even though you're sitting most of the time in your chair in front of that camera, let your personality shine. Wow. 
It really helps when students see you moving, dancing, and wearing attractive costumes and being the energetic and cheerful teacher that you really are. Additional things to consider. Set a nice account profile picture of you smiling. Open the meeting a few minutes before the schedule. As you wait for all students to be online, check your materials and your costume one last time. When you know it's almost showtime, smile before you turn on your camera and greet them with full of energy and enthusiasm. Keep that smile! It's always great to start and end your lesson with a positive energy. That's it! The 8 classroom management tips that you can try and apply in your own virtual classrooms. You might find these tips useful and effective in your own class, or maybe not at all. I understand the struggle we are all facing now as teachers. Unfortunately, there is no one-size-fits-all to every situation. But don't worry, in case you feel like you're left behind, know that you are not. We are all new to this, and there is always room for learning and improvement. So, remember that the best way to get ahead is to get started. And always put in your mind that the greatest teachers are those who are very much willing to go beyond what's expected for their students. So, I challenge you to be that teacher. You can do it. So, thank you very much for watching and I hope that you learned something new today. And I wish you the very best in your teaching career. Till we meet again, goodbye and God bless.